morning, Judge. Good morning. I just give a last moment uh, to move this short notice and time to share something how I came to the Lord. And it has taken, I have five years how God has been moved to a fast track in five minutes. So here I begin. Uh, five years back, uh, I, I was working in a company, it's a rent group, I worked as a secretary. But I will all begin how I was seeking God. After my marriage life, uh, I was as a child, I was a God-fearing person. But being in a Catholic background, uh, going to church, I think most of us know, when you commit sin, you can just confess and take the penance and you can do it again. <laughs> so that was a routine thing. And being like commandments, okay, I'm fine with it. So there was a time when I got married and uh, my focus completely changed. I thought, I'll be trying to serve God only when I first make some good bank balances and make good riches because I come from a poor background. And uh, after getting married, this become, became a most priority. <clears throat> So I wanted to become rich in life and I told God I'm going to serve you only after I become rich. So it all began uh, at the age of 28 to between 20 to 30. I did every manipulation, everything that I could get. I borrowed money from my friends, relatives, as well as where I was to work. I was not so faithful, but I was another very topmost. And God, although being an undergraduate, I was working with the chairman secretary. And uh, often the chairman used to fire me and that was the time I thought I should have my own business too. And being in the company, I even borrowed loans from the company, from the banks. And I thought one day I'll uh, become a good businessman. And uh, my borrowings went up to one crore, more than a crore I believe. And that was the age of 30. And my salary was just 15,000. Just imagine how I just managed. Because I want to do something for my family and for my future. And God was nowhere because I thought I'd serve God in the second stage. But in all of a sudden, it happened at the age of 32. One fine day, the whole thing came down. I used to invest in stock markets. In one day, the stock market crashed and I must have really lost 20 lakhs in a day. Just imagine a 15,000 drawing salary losing 20 lakhs. And then I had some assets. I had my car business. I had 15, to 15 cars. And my, that all had loans on it. And everything, I was broken. I was totally gone. My family, my marriage life. And it's born to happen because the life that I chose was a very wrong way. And uh, it was not in tune with God. Because God was nowhere in the picture. I had just kept him in a box. So, but I was at the same time. And this is what all happened. Everything went against me. I had no balances, I couldn't pay many payments. And in between of this, I even felt sick. Now, this was a very stunning thing. And uh, my sickness was diagnosed with jaundice. And for three months, I couldn't believe I couldn't work, nothing. And I was in my last stage. With jaundice, there's a level of 13. And doctors will say, when you're reaching to 13, you're gone off. And I was on my hospital bed. And people used to come and pay a visit my friends, relatives. But I never knew those visits were not a uh, faithful visit. They just came and whispered in my ears when I was at my last stage. And they said, uh, after you getting well, first thing you've got to come and pay up the whole loan. And uh, that, I was so, I was broken. I was crying out to God, God, just save me once. Just here, like how Samson could just, I ask forgiveness and I, I mean, my relatives, every, and this was born to happen. I took it in a good spirit because it, I messed up the whole life. Even my close relatives and friends, and it was the time like I could really count who was closer to me. And there was no one around. And I just cried out to God. God, please hear me once. And if you do it this time, I will serve you. I will keep you first. And... Uh, I want to be alive because I want to pay up this back people. Every load that I've taken, I need to pay. Believe me, on the very next day, my jaundice came down. And, and I couldn't start walking. And 
doctors were blown away and they were telling me, it's a great miracle. I don't now I know. And that was the time my season that I had, I kept God first. And believe me, from that day onwards, I was seeking, how can I serve God? How can I go after Him? And I ended up in one, two ministries, but I was not being fed properly. And uh, one fine day, I was wrestling in my prayers before God, and I said, God, lead me to a church where I can really grow in your word, and I can just keep serving you. And I go to another shop. I think you all must have heard this, how I uh, was guaranteed by that lady who was in charge, Justin's mommy. <laughs> she told me, you take this college in uh, Great English Church and I guarantee you, you will never regret in your life. Believe me, that one statement and the time I came to the church and really uh, things have changed and I've never, I've never regretted I'm here in the state. I never even do to the time I reach even heavens. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a verse God gave me in the Bible in Ezekiel 34. She said, I know you have been wandering from places to places. No one has fed you, but I am taking you to a good shepherd and where you will be fed and you will be lying on the green pastures. So this is a verse and I'm so happy we have Pastor Carl who is and God spoke about this pastor to me. And we are so privileged to be in this church. And here I'll just show a close two minutes. It's one crore loan I had. I did not know how I got to do it. Now, you leave your old habits, now you got to follow the right way. And I do not know how do I make it, but, and you know it's very difficult, but I trusted God. And I said, God, I do not know. He said, I hope you're going to, I'm going to follow you. In this last three, four years, my debts have just come to 50% down. That means our repayment of near about 50 lakhs. I do not know how did I, how God did it, because this is not men ways, this is God ways. And uh, I still struggle, but, and then I still struggle my finances, but I, there's a verse in my devotion, Dr. Stephen says, I cry to God, God, now it's high time. I want to be on, I want to serve you, and I want to be some day serving in a greater way, like I want to be in the mission field, but how am I going to carry this baggage? And uh, God, uh, devotion time, Dr. Stephen is written in Deuteronomy, one of the verses. It is not that I cannot, uh, you know, clear all your debts, but by little by little, I will dry out every nation, every problem that you have. If I can do it in a time, the beast will arise, and the beast speaks about pride. So God knows, you know, he can just do it little by little. And you're closing. This is a very stunning thing which happened. Now, I was into this car business, and there was a huge tax which I need to pay, uh, service tax, with penalty and all, it will go. I have not paid it for the last five years, and it goes up to 10 to 15 lakhs. I said, God, I, I don't have the money to pay, but in my heart, I'm going to pay every penny that I owe from who I have taken. And just my prayers was there, I kept on finding up my returns. One fine day, I did not know how God answered it, but it came in the newspaper, in the ad, from so to from last five years, who have not paid their taxes, can pay their taxes without any penalty, without any court proceedings, without any charges, without any criminal proceedings, and you can also pay it with installment basis. This is something I didn't share, but this is something which I am wondering. Here we are serving God, and God from heaven, like He tunes up, He, you know, He governs, and he, for one man's sake, He can change the rules and the laws. You know, if a person, if any Christian that is following God, and this is the greatest thing. And till today, God has been really working, and like I do not know how the repayments are happening, but it's all glory to God. <coughs> That this is what I want to say, that I kept God first and God restored my marriage life. You know, the best part even my wife, she didn't come to the church, but she's there in Vasai church too. And she's doing a Bible college too, you know, the gospel. So, so my children are here, they're always there and they are also more uh, closer to God and they are very much, uh, that's how God worked in my life. Thank you.
take the uh, read from two portions, Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 12, and then Genesis chapter 50, verses 18 to 20. We turn in Isaiah 55, please, and stand as we read the word of God. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord. And he will have compassion on him. And to our God he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bear and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return empty to me, without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. For you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Genesis chapter 50. Verses 18 to 20. Then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in God's place? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. Father, we thank you for these precious words, God. Thank you that your thoughts and your ways are way higher than what our thoughts or ways would ever be. Thank you, God, that no matter what goes on in life, you have a way, Father. And you will always bring it out for your glory, God. We just thank you. As we heard in the testimonies, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for being with us every moment of our lives. Uh, we thank you this morning for the word that we have read and for the message that we will hear. We ask you, Lord, for anointing, the pastor, God, for his empowerment and his speech, Lord, and supernatural strength as he ministers the word to us, God. Uh, speak to us in the depths of our heart, Lord, and transform us by the word. Your word accomplish its purpose, God. Let it be happy today, Father, to each one of us, God. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I'll fix when we jump to you. Sure is that God is at work, not yesterday, also today. I found with this little bottle, I like that. I'll make a fine white little bottle. So. This morning we we'll speak on thinking with God. God's ways higher than our ways. God's thoughts higher than our thoughts. Next week I'll we'll speak on what happens when our plans are interrupted. Excellent message. What happens when your plans, when your plans seem interrupted? Now listen carefully. I love the fact God says, listen, my word will not what become void. It will send in like a rain and the snow will not come back void. It will accomplish what I please. So every time we speak the word, every time a person speaks the word, 
in Mud Island, in Santa Cruz, in Burberry, Youth Ministry, Sunday School. I says the word of God will not return the void. In Afghanistan, the radio program second week, my word will not, not return the void. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> now listen carefully. We love the way that Joseph is responding to his brothers. His brothers thought, after dad dies, Oh goodness, Joseph and Abadons. He's in a bad grudge because we treated him so badly in his youth. They said, Joseph, please forgive us. But Joseph responded amazingly. He did not respond with revenge. He did not respond with emotionalism or bitterness. She didn't say, no, I assure you. You know why? His thoughts were God's thoughts. His thoughts went higher than man's thoughts. He was thinking with what? God. Because he thought with God, he responded with love and forgiveness. Many people get upset. Joseph didn't get upset with God. Some people get upset with God. When bad things happen to them, when evil is done to them, they think, oh God, how could you allow it to happen? But it's not God. Look, there's one thing. God never harms his people. Never. The devil may do it. Evil people may harm you. Or bad choices may harm you. For God to the two things I want you to remember always show them please with the flag. Where you show them? No, 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 no. First was my show home. That's already covered. No. Okay, that's fine. Two things I want you to remember. Number one. Huh. Okay. God is all can I say it? God is always good. He never intends to harm us. That's Jeremiah chapter twenty nine, verse eleven. Second principle I want you to remember. God will turn his faithful to transform what seems tragic into something that's so good. Romans 8, 28. Well, the planes got shot down, Malaysia. So thank God for that. Man did that. Until the kingdom comes with an evil on the earth. And tragedies. But soon they see it's on the Middle East. I teach you Bible prophecy. I assure you that what's happening today is bringing, bringing well, the Bible all spoke about. We had more, more intense as in days go by. <coughs> but listen carefully. God was his face will transform what is done. Unless you believe this two things, you won't run to God. <coughs> if you think God's behind the whole thing, you won't come to God. Some people get hurt. Some people think God did evil to them. Not so. God, all knower will never harm you. God is faithful. Amen. Now Joseph chose to believe God is good, even though evil things happen to him. He said, God, you're good, even though my brothers hurt me, mistreated me, sold me as a slave. A little later in life, he said, God, you're good even though I'm unfairly accused of raping, raping, trying to rape her and her wife, and so on to prison, God is so good. 
You know what it says in Genesis chapter 39, 40, 41, it says six times. And the Lord was a Joseph and blessed him and brought us home. And the Lord was with Joseph in prison. What's it mean? It means that Joseph, even in difficult times, sends God's presence. But more than that, in difficult times, Joseph had God's peace and experienced God's favor in prison. You say, how come? How can Joseph experience such peace and presence and favor of God in difficult times? Seek of God, Joseph was at all times thinking of God. That's key. He never let his thoughts sway. He kept thinking with God. He said, God, he will be fellowship with you in this difficult situation. Imagine that. Imagine you're 70 years old. You're loved by your father, object of love. Grew up as the object of your father's love. And then suddenly everything changes. In one day, everything changes. Sold as a slave in another country. Everything going bad. You see, Joseph got reacted. And many times when things change, we need to make adjustments. Amen? Say that. When things in my life change, I need to make adjustments in what? In my thinking. I can react visibly, negatively, and I experience constantly wrong thinking. But I can think with God. Say that. I want to think with what? With God. I want to think with God. Imagine Joseph said, Oh, forget it, God. You put me in a situation. I'm not going to serve you now. I'm going to live for self gratification. Live. When Paul's wife came, he'd be seduced. Joseph said, No. Listen to this once. Was with wife. He said, Listen, which is not a solution. He said, Genesis 39, verse 9. He said, For how can you sin against God? There is evil against God. He meant, God is someone I love. God's my friend. God's good. God's loving. I love of God. I want to sin against God. And because he didn't, because he did, because he chose God's what? Thoughts, he also fulfilled what? God's ways. And Sunday, 13 years later, after his trial, Joseph was what? Elevated to the Prime Minister of Egypt. If he had not served God, if he had succumbed to his thinking, I wonder if it ever happened. But God had prepared beforehand his future destiny, had prepared his future role. Everything was wonderfully in God's plan. So he had to abide and first with God. That's what you do, that's what I do. We never, I never stop thinking of God, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. That's the very wicked for secular ways, the unrighteous for critical thoughts. For my thoughts are not your, come on, say it. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are not your ways. For as high as the heaven is above the earth, so are my ways above your ways, says the Lord. I think in this level, I'm thinking far beyond. I'm thinking Joseph making promise of one day and preserve all those in the nation. Imagine that. If we think differently, we respond differently. When Joseph's brother came to Joseph, he said, he didn't say, he didn't say, he didn't say, you gave me evil, I give you evil back. He said, I said, listen, Lord, you meant it for evil, but what God meant it for good. So we can preserve many people. 
United Nations through wisdom. That's the plan. That's the whole plan when God does that. That's a carefully. Therefore, I need to know what God thought. Look at Jeremiah 29, please, if you would. God says, for I know the plans that I have for you because of the Lord. Plans for what? For your welfare, for your good, Hebrew says. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, believers. Plans for your welfare, plans for your good, not to give you calamity, but plans to give you a future and expect an end. No wonderful plans. Therefore, we need to learn God's thinking, thinking, and thoughts. We learn God's thoughts and what? In Bible school. We learn thoughts, listen to pulpit messages. We learn thoughts, God's thoughts, reading the Bible day. We learn thoughts, we listen to good sound teaching of the Bible. As we learn the Bible, we learn how God wants things. And then we choose to think. Because in different circumstances, when circumstances change, if we go to God and say, okay, Lord, what now? What well, now is this, Lord? Tell me what you're thinking. I think these are my thoughts, Lord, but what are your thoughts? So you can fulfill your ways. You put on the mind of Christ. Amen. In Romans 8, 28 comes to the picture. For all things, come on, put the verse up. For all things, you know the verse. For all things work together for what? Good to those who love God, call him his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. The first one, my main breath. What's it mean? I know you know this verse, and you've copied it many times, but do you really believe it? Do you really believe Romans 8 28? Do you really believe in a situation not going well? Romans 8 28 is at work. Do you believe it? I wonder. That's working. But this verse is often misunderstood. Some people think they don't understand what the verse means. Let me break it up for you. Let's go to the careful. It says it does not mean all things will work together for me, for my good, or for it's all going to work together. But that doesn't mean, does not mean all things work together and have a happy ending. Sometimes there are no happy, no happy endings on the end. John Baptist got his head cut off. Paul got martyred. Peter got upside down. Persecution. All things work together for what? Good to those who love God. Listen carefully. It says, For we know, Oida Greek says, We know with certainty, we know as a fact, we know as truth, that God, not some fate, God the master planner, God the God of history, God the controller of everything, works together, works together, all things. Works it all together, works one. Everything, everything means what? Well, he's working behind the scenes with mistakes you made, with your past, with what people did to you, with suffering, with persecution, with divorce, with debt, with illness. He's working it together. Maybe he didn't cause it, but he's working it together for what? All things together, all, all the not, not separately, some things we don't like. Somebody said, you know, the famous illustration, when you bake a great cake, there's raw eggs and salt, don't taste good. 
and flour definitely doesn't taste good. And sugar is okay, we're not good for you with diabetes. But you put them all together, you have a wonderful delicious cake. All works together. Somehow Joseph didn't see that fully, he just walked with God. And all things to work together for what? For good. For good, for God. You know, in the Bible there's who one mentioned in the official genealogy of Jesus Christ. First of all, there was Tema, then Rehab, then Ruth, and Bathsheba. Every one of them didn't have a good past. Tema, she used her own father in law getting pregnant. Those of the Moabites got married to a Jewish man, broke the law. Rehab was a prostitute. And Bashi became a little and had a husband got killed. Not good. Not good at all. But God worked it together. He forgave them, saved them. And one of these four ladies became part of the official faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a great plan. God takes our problems, God takes our sin, God takes our mistakes, and He works it together all for good. That's what happened in Calvary. Amen. All the force of evil came against Christ. He won the victory. That's the whole purpose. We understand. For good to what? To those who love God to those who are called. It means this verse is only for believers. And those who love God. That's not all things don't work together for those who do bad. They can only expect bad, right? Maybe. Trouble. But for those who are called according to this purpose, what's the purpose of God? That God would conform every single one of us to the image of Christ. That's God's wonderful purpose one day, to make us all like Jesus. Amen. And that purpose will happen. Because those who foreknew, these will also be destined to become from your son. These same ones he called, these same ones he declared righteous, these same ones one day are going to be glorified. And the chain is never broken. So when God called you, friends, guess what? He already sees you one day before him in glory. God sees the end beginning. He sees Nandita already before the throne. He sees us worshiping him on. He sees all the things on earth already over on the earth. He sees beginning, end, middle, and future all together. And the good news is it's going to work together for his glory. Say amen. That's a great thing. I told a story before Charles Colson. Remember him? Chuck Colson. Key advisor of Richard Nixon. But a mean man, unsaved, hard, manipulative, scheming. He wanted the Democrats to win at any cost. So he had the Watergate scandal, the week of the other party conference room. Was Richard Nixon's plan, sorry, was Charles Colson's plan, and Richard Nixon went with it. And so Pat Colson went to prison. Hard man, mean man, scheming man, and the prison God met him. And saved. God gave him a new heart, a new spirit, put his Holy Spirit in him, wrote his word in his heart, gave him a new tender heart. God saved the cycle of prison, came out and began to vision. God said, Listen, won't you start a word to prisoners in jail? And so started what's called the International Prison Fellowship. And to Chuck Colson's life, prison ministry started around the world. Today, 
in 180 countries. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of prisoners come to know Christ. What happened? Chuck Olson began to what? Believe God. Have his thoughts. Moses, I'll take you from Pharaoh's palace. And you're educated. And you're an old wisdom Egypt. I'll take you from there. I'll bring the backside desert, Jones. I'll ship you all self-sufficiency, but you ain't giving all my thoughts. And I'll send you back. I'll use you with a weight and a mighty hand. Wow, Lord. That's your plan. So what God wants to do is to carefully. Wants us to have our minds renewed with his thoughts. Keep your minds renewed. Don't think with your thoughts. God wants to give you his thoughts. Look at verses Ephesians chapter 4. Shalom. Read the verse. God says, listen, in reference to your former manner of life, lay aside the old man, corrupted in according to lust, and you renewed, you read the next verse, verse 20, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What's God saying? He wants believers to put off the old way of thinking and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. First thing is, I want you to be renewed. Renewed in your mind. Next verse, please. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. If you've been raised with Christ, keep seeing the things about what Christ is. Set your mind on things about what Christ lives. For your life is, you died in life is here with Christ and God. Set your mind on things about. Read your mind. Have new thoughts. Think with God. Keep thinking with God. And have your mind set above and things above. In Romans chapter 12. Present your body as a living sacrifice to God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you may prove what's the will of God. After you renew your mind, we want to fulfill the will of God in your life. The word transformed here by the morphos all means as a caterpillar going to a butterfly. If your thoughts are low, you think low. If thoughts are high, you been thinking with God. Big things begin to happen. When Rajan was saved, when Rajan came to Christ, his thoughts became higher. Nothing changed, just thinking changed. When the thinking changes, everything changes. You understand that? Many times you try to change people's ways. Oh, change this way, change this habit. Nothing changes in the mind, thinks differently. We can think rhetorically, we can think with faith. When you speak a different language, suddenly everything begins to change. Because the thinking changes. Say amen. amen. That's why we're in church. That's why we're a Bible school. That's why we're Sunday schools. That's why Christian schools and orphanages. What are we doing? We're changing the way people think. We're making people think for God all over the world. Amen. I'll tell you a story. Small, simple story. Samantha, I love Samantha, says me. You know why? And now she had Christ, but she did not fully. My fear came in. Nothing changed. She just started quoting verses. She changed her thinking about the situation. You know, God, we we change in this way. We think we've got our trials. We think we've got our foundation, like Joseph thought. I think we got in prison, like Chuck Olson thought, Joseph thought. We think we got about different things, and I think we got a marriage. 
<laughs> I think we need to think with God for relationships in the body. How to see people in Christ and see the mystery of Christ in people's lives and not know people of the flesh. But think with God in conversations and have conversations from heaven. Right, you know, there's different kinds of conversations. Some things are neutral when you talk. Some things are spiritual. Some things are downright calm. Which one you choose? You say, what's neutral? Neutrals, they come together. I can say, I can. And I won't rain these days. And I get the neutral. There are more cricket matches, or soccer matches. Neutral. We need that. It's part of, it's part of life. A lot of conversation. We don't go around quoting 50 verses to you all the time. Right? We talk with your friends. Also, something called cow. Don't gossip. Don't discuss things that are edifying. Also, things that are what? Heavenly. Heavenly. We we bring God into our lives, in conversations. I think he has changed some, the words have changed. Amen. Think about how to raise children. I'll tell you a fun story. You can pray for this. You know, for a long time, I think my wife and I, we worried about Andrew's future. I'm 70 years old, soccer, I love soccer. Nothing wrong with soccer. When you fall in the Nancy the Fisher in soccer, right? I said, Andrew, when you be a missionary, go for it. Soccer play, I'm not so sure. <laughs> but we tried to talk about soccer from the last eight years. From the time he was eight years old to now, he's like a strong and strong and strong. And so I said, Lord, okay, what to do? You didn't want to study much. Okay, Lord. And I said, listen, don't fight your dream. You say, okay, don't fight your dream. Join him, join him where he is at. And I will work in his dream and show who I am. I have to change my thinking. You know, I love soccer. My pastor Brian is the owns national player, soccer player. Soccer is a different in the family. All play soccer. I thought my son had to play soccer. He made deal for it. We play soccer and study too. If you study, you play soccer. If you don't study, you don't play soccer. <laughs> done that, done. But those games, it suddenly got excited. They became better and better. Now his friends want to go to the U.S. City for a camp. We have no money to support him. I said, listen, Andrew, I have no money for missionaries. If God be pray, God will sponsor you. We you believe it twice, no once, twice you got full sponsorship. So soon when I'm looking back, just telling you my stories about telling parents, don't worry about the kids. I just change my thinking. And then those those first time girls come to that girls again. He's only capable of full sponsorship on the team. Now, the second time is gone for four months. And when he gets there, he says, Dad of Gold, the coach training him is an amazing coach. He trained Tim Schultz, trained the U.S. Women's National Team, the number two in the world. 150 coaches under them, 40,000 students on the academy, training personally. We get to the lesson, first week he gets there, after one week he gets injured. His knee is in the cast. Can't play. We see, you know, 
to see what is happening after his life. God was reaching him. And those three weeks on the cars, all he took him was the Bible. He listened to a place of worship music and began giving his verses back to God speaking to him. God was meeting him. Not in my world, God was meeting him in his world. God was saying, young kid, I love you. I'm for you in your world. I'm sure you how real I am. Now, sucker may not be a Korean enthusiast. <coughs> I just teach you what I am in this world of yours. So, three with some cars. Now, he has a, he has a big game coming up. Files for the academy team. If he gets in, there's an academy team, 18 B team. If he get 18 before he get academy team. So, understand the A-team. They fly out for that. And he's just come out of the car and says, Dad, I can't play. I'm last year, I'm in practice three weeks. I said, this Adam. First game didn't go well. I said, court Joshua 1-8. Listen, here's what it means. You play the little word day and night, they give you success. You have an outstanding game. On the field, scored two goals, assisted people. Coach who came to him and said, Andrew, will you, will you consider soccer seriously? We'd like to move to USA. We'd like to be in the A team by one day to finish the young. But you know, it's never ever going to happen. I don't know if you're afraid of that one, but my point is this it's a God moving in his life. After one week, he calls me back, says, Dad, you won't believe it. My church and I coming to Denver. Of all the places, that's his favorite team. I don't know if you're across with a soccer fan. Wayne Rose is the idol. He says, not coming to New York, not coming to California, coming to Denver. They kind of go, what's the, what's the game? I said, go, go. They said, I've got tickets to our right behind that. $30 tickets to our right behind. So I said to him, Andrew, the God put it this far, maybe you see Wayne Rooney close by. I was praying, but we prayed. You won't believe what happened. Out of all the kids in the whole stadium, Andrew and two others were chosen to be on the field. Watching photographers, keeping the photographers in line. <laughs> so he's behind the goalpost and on the field, jumping around, excited as <laughs> ever. Is, he saw Wayne doing shoot two goals. And we got to watch the video. And then Andrew jumping back in excitement. He got all the autographs to all the people. And then I said, I said, go on. That's amazing. All the kids and teenagers who don't misunderstand me, who go to work in different fields. Liz Alex used to be in Sunday school. Now she's ministering to me. She sent me a beautiful, beautiful meditation. I want to read it to you. We close. Turn to James chapter 2, please. So long, those two verses. <sighs> I moved to Ezra Alex in Sunday School. Now she's a young lady. She's always seeing a Sunday School program teaching. And she is ministering the words so beautifully. James 1, verse 2 and 3. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet fires of various kinds. For you know the testing of your faith produces patience. Mm 
And here is a bottle of reading she gave me. Strange as it may seem, one of the primary verses of being shaken by suffering is to make our faith more unshakable. Faith is like muscle tissue. If you stress it to the limit, it is stronger and weaker. That's what James means here. When the faith is threatened and tested and stretched to breaking point, the result is greater capacity to endure. God loves faith so much that he will test it to the breaking point so it is to keep it pure and strong. For example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, it says, Paul says, listen, let's read it there, please. Read it there. Said Paul said, I want to show you this. You don't lie on yourself. My God, it is a given death. God so values our wholehearted faith that we will graciously take away everything else in the world that we may be tempted to rely on, even life itself. His aim is to grow us deeper and stronger in our confidence that he himself will be all I need. Once we are able to say with the psalmist, whom have I in heaven but thee? There is nothing on earth that is desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That's cool. That's amazing. And God says this, very simple, want to think about thoughts. Don't worry about your children, don't worry about situations, don't worry about situations. Our God is good. And I'm working to get all things for my glory. And I'll see it. I'm working behind the scenes. Amen. Amen. Let's buy it. Lord, we just thank you this morning. Thank you for these words. As we search the scriptures, we see your ways, we see your thoughts all over the this morning, God. When our minds are focused on your thoughts, God, we will know your ways. That we can have confidence, hope in you. Thank you for these precious words, God. We pray this morning, God, that uh, the areas in our life where you want us to change our thinking, God, and speak to us, Father. Maybe someone's living in fear, have hope, have confidence in God. Maybe in our minds there may be doubts. But your ways are higher than our ways, God. Help us change our thinking in areas where there is negativity, insecurity, God. We feel inferior, but we are in you, God. You are our Father. We are known as children of God. You call us friends. We thank you. As we heard in the scriptures, God, in James 1, you have said it counted on joy, 
my brethren. We belong to you, God. We pray no thought would ever defeat us. It cannot because we are in you. So we thank you. Thank you for the hope that we have in your word. Thank you for the encouragement of the scriptures. Lord, challenges our faith. Motivates us to serve you, Father. We pray this morning if there's anyone here for the first time and they have never put their trust in Christ, know that it's Jesus. He's the Savior. of his whole human race. No one came and died for our sins but Jesus. No one rose again from the grave but Jesus. No one gives us eternal life but Jesus. No one can take us to heaven except Jesus. If you're here this morning and you want to be sure of going to heaven, just simply say this prayer in your heart. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. I put my trust in you. I believe in you. Forgive me my sins. If you have said that prayer in your heart, if you really put your trust in Christ, know that you are saved. The Bible says, if you put your trust in Christ with all your heart, Christ promises you heaven. No one else can. Soon this life will be over. Soon the time will be over. And then we stand before God. And the Bible says each one of us needs to have that prayer. Needs to put our trust in Christ. So if you are here and you have never prayed that prayer before, pray it and trust Jesus for your life. Say, Jesus, save me. He will hear you. He will answer you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you this morning. Thank you for the wonderful word, God. Thank you that we can change our thinking and have thoughts of Christ in our life, leading and guiding us, encouraging us all through the way. We don't have to give up. We don't have to live in fear because you have won the victory for us. We worship you. We praise you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.